recent events which certainly rocked the United States. The first was the hearing, the confirmation hearing before the U.S. Senate of now Justice Clarence Thomas. The second was the revelation that Magic Irvin, Magic Johnson, a basketball player, was found to have the HIV virus. We'd like to comment on these and similar events. I'm Julius Smetona. This is what Catholics believe. Joining me today for our discussion are two priests who say the traditional Latin Mass exclusively, uh, Father Clarence Kelly, uh, spiritual director of St. Joseph's Novitiate in Round Top, New York, a congregation of traditional Roman Catholic sisters, and Father William Jenkins, pastor of St. Therese of the Child Jesus Church in Parma, Ohio. Uh, Reverend Fathers, the, the first event which just uh, uh, riveted the nation and was constantly in everyone's mind was the Senate confirmation hearings of Clarence Thomas. Now, uh, many, many conservatives were uh, very pleased with his nomination. He had a, a exhibited uh, a conservative record during his previous tenure. Uh, many women's rights organizations were very upset about it. Uh, he's interesting, too, that he had a Catholic background. He had a Catholic training in grade school, I believe, in, at least in junior high school, high school, and even con studied for the priesthood for a while. And upon his nomination, he gave uh, thanks, voice thanks to the nuns who helped him so much. And uh, at any rate, things, uh, he subsequently left the Catholic faith. But he became nominated. What, what are your feelings? The first question I'd like to ask is on these revelations of a former of employee, not only just, just on, the, on the revelations in general, but moreover on the fact that these things would be played on primetime television and such things would be discussed in every home in the United States on TV. What do you think of that? Well, first of all, I'd like to say, getting back to the nomination itself, I really don't know what kind of man he is, obviously. We will find out in the future. But I cannot help thinking that anyone who has the enemies that he has must be good. And I hope and pray that the fears that his nomination stirred up in the hearts of so many including Senator Edward Kennedy. I hope and pray that those fears are not groundless. I hope that they will prove to be fears based upon uh, a certain reality. Mm -hmm. But as I say, that's something in the future we don't really know, and uh, time will certainly tell. Uh, I would say this, though, that uh, the whole thing, as many, many people have <clears throat> commented turned into a, a kind of circus. And the reason it really turned into such a circus, again, I personally think, is this unbelievable fear on the part of the liberals and the, the uh, what someone has termed the feminazis, uh, on the part of these people, that the rights of the unborn uh, might be protected. Mm -hmm. This unbelievable reaction on their part is an indication of how determined they are in ensuring that the right to murder unborn children will not be taken away. Father Jenkins, what about first the question of calumny? And the second about the, the question of discretion, prudence, purity, of, of making, discussing such things which are best left unsaid, but not only discussing them, but discussing them in public on prime time television so every home in the nation now has been desensitized and, and things which were not even mentioned in the past are normal conversation. What, what are the effects of this, do you think, on the country? Well, of course, it's, it's a very uh, corrupting influence, I think. You know, what you used to see blaring on headlines in the National Enquirer and other tabloids at the supermarket checkout counters uh, suddenly finds its way to primetime television. And, uh, you know, primetime television ordinarily has to be very respectable, but this was a perfect opportunity to, uh, to air something that is very, very sorted. And... Uh, 
and you know, a lot of little children sitting at home during the day, accustomed to watching TV, uh, while their mothers are out running around uh, uh, doing the household chores or in the care of a uh, of a uh, housekeeper or who knows, maybe even at daycare centers. I don't know if, how many of them put the t children before the television set during the day. But uh, this is obviously uh, not the kind of thing that the children should be imbibing at this this period of their lives. Um, not only because of the uh, of the damage it'll do to their whole concept of of government and morals and government, but uh, some of the things that were said over primetime television with regard to, to the allegations, uh, the alleged conduct of uh, of Justice Thomas, were the most abhorrent, disgusting, revolting things that you could uh, you could talk about. <clears throat> uh, I think it's just a part of the present day infatuation, though, almost obsession with sexual impurity. Um, and as Father Kelly said, too, um, there was really a, 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 a most malevolent effort to discredit him, oddly enough, by using the very things that people love to watch in the movie theater and at home in some of the R-rated films that, uh, that are cleaned up a little bit and then sent over the air. People sit there and love to watch this stuff. And then when the allegations are made against Thomas, they're accusations. They should make him a TV, TV star. Mm -hmm. Then he'd be, uh, then he'd be accepted by all, all these people as being a great hero. Mm -hmm. but back to I, I do think that uh, uh, it moved them onto another plateau. I, I don't think any of these things can be seen in their full significance as isolated events. Uh, television and the movies are a part of this revolution, this uh, attempt to, to utterly and completely destroy the moral fiber of the American people. And I do think that there are certain uh, parameters uh, within which they operate, and as the years go by, they move the limits so that what was unthinkable uh, 25 years ago is common today. And as the years go by, more and more and more things become acceptable and the people become increasingly and almost to the point now of being utterly and completely desensitized. And the discussion of these things causes these things. Uh, the, the TV movies they put on about child abuse and about uh, incest and so forth and so on, these things cause the very things they are supposed to be uh, right. attacking. It's they, act, they, ca they actually cause it. And then, of course, the treatment of the people who do those things is, is relatively mild. Uh, that also uh, constitutes, in my opinion, a, a further cause. You know, it's they say if, if someone, for example, commits some terrible uh, act, uh, say, involving the horrible and monstrous crime of incest, they say he needs, uh, you know, a psychiatrist. Well, maybe he does, but, but every immoral person doesn't need a psychiatrist. Hmm. What oftentimes they need when they are not controlling their own behavior from within is they need some stiff external punishment. Right. Backing up uh, before these revelations was uh, some very interesting hearings and uh, repartee which uh, was engaged in by the, if we may say this, the inquisitors of, of the Senate and Justice Thomas. Uh, Justice Thomas apparently, according to some reports, uh, thought highly of the works of St. Augustine and St. Thomas Aquinas and in the past wrote about the natural law. Now. First, maybe you can explain what the natural law is, and then comment on this interesting development where Justice Thomas said he would not let a natural or higher law influence him in his application of constitutional principles. Well, the natural law is the law that God has built into his creation, as it were, and which is discerned by the light of reason. We are able to discern certain things about what is right and wrong without a divine revelation. 
and since the creation of God reflects the mind of God, it also reflects the laws of God. And so we are able to determine, for example, that man has a right to life, whether you have any written law or no written law, whether you have a constitution, no constitution. We know that there are certain things that are right and wrong, good and bad, intrinsically evil or acceptable. And this we know from the natural law. That is why people have a right under certain circumstances to overthrow their government if the laws of the government are contrary to the natural law or contrary to the revealed law. So we say in this country, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. We do not appeal to a constitution in order to establish that principle, but we appeal to the principle in order to establish the Constitution. And I thought that it was a tragedy that Judge Thomas, in the course of the hearing, did not take the high ground. Instead of taking the high ground, he bent over backwards to convince the members of this panel that he would not make his judgments as a justice of the Supreme Court with the natural law as the, ulti the ultimate arbiter. I think that was a tremendous uh, tragedy and perhaps on his part an act of cowardice. Father Jenkins. <clears throat> the very Declaration of, the, of uh, Independence of the United States of America was written appealing to the natural law, to a higher law, to the law of nature, and nature is God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so to say it is, it is un-American to appeal to the natural law, uh, that's a statement that can be made only by somebody who hasn't any, any idea uh, about the, the founding of this country. Uh, Senator Biden uh, drilled uh, Clarence Thomas very, very uh, minutely on this issue of the natural law because his point was, well, if you're, if you're going to take an oath to uphold the Constitution, that has to be the supreme law. But uh, evidently the man doesn't understand that the, the very uh, Constitution of the United States appealed in large measure to the natural law. It is unfortunate that Clarence Thomas backed down from that. I understand he was instructed uh, by the White House to, uh, to be mealy mouth and try, to, uh, try not to uh, put his head too far above where he might get shot. That's most unfortunate. But uh, it is also very worrisome that we have senators who, uh, who believe that uh, civil law is the highest law because that's the very ground on which they justify abortion. It's the very ground on which the Soviets justified their concentration camps. And uh, if that's so, then the law of man rules. It makes right and wrong. And then might does make right. If that's Patrick all we're left Buchanan with. mentioned, if, if there is no higher law than the U.S. Constitution or a purely <coughs> nat national nat uh, law, then why is anyone persecuting Nazi Germany? No higher law. Sure. I mean, you're watching what Catholics believe. I'd like to make mention of the fact also that we do have a beautiful four-color four color Roman Catholic calendar being published for the year 1992. <clears throat> Those who are interested in having this calendar in their homes should contact our operators and let them know. And they can order over the phone. We'd be glad to send them to them. They'll be available in, uh, within the first two weeks of December. Okay. Father, Reverend Fathers, uh, moving from the nomination of uh, Clarence Thomas, the, the next event that literally rocked the nation, and one wonders why it did, but nevertheless it did, was the revelation that a, a basketball player, Irvin Magic Johnson, had tested positive for the HIV virus. Uh, it seems that the initial reaction was that he was a hero for coming out and, and mentioning this and what he was going to do and what the media was even more happy about that he was going to go around the country uh, encouraging people to practice safe adultery, safe fornication and safe sodomy. Now he didn't use those words, but that's exactly what it is. I mean, people don't want to call a spade a spade, but that's exactly what he was doing. And this was greeted with tremendous, uh, tremendous joy. What, what kind of an indication or a barometer is this of the moral health of the United States where, I, I, you know, where in the early 60s, Nelson Rockefeller couldn't run for president because he was divorced. And now in 30 short years, we've come to this place where someone who encourages a violation of the Ten Commandments is considered great. We've come a long way. <laughs> uh, 
if a person does something wrong, if a person commits a sin, and they are in a certain sense caught in that sin, as he was caught in his sin. He was caught in that sin by nature, and by, uh, by nature's God. If someone does something wrong, is caught doing it, acknowledges that he has done something wrong and repents of it, then I think we have a certain measure of, uh, I wouldn't say admiration, perhaps, perhaps a slight measure of admiration mixed with a spirit of mercy. But if a person commits a sin and suffers the natural consequences of that sin, and AIDS is a natural consequence of sin in the 1990s, and is turned into a hero because he's going to tell people, don't make the mistake I made. Not that I sinned. That's not my mistake. My mistake is that I didn't take certain precautions. There's nothing wrong with the sin. In fact, I'm going to go, as you say, around the country and tell people all about safe fornication, safe sodomy, and so forth. I think it's unbelievable, unbelievable, incomprehensible how a man like that, and this is to say nothing against him personally. I mean, there are many sinners. We deal with sinners all the time. But it is unbelievable that he could be turned into a hero, uh, the stature of which we have not seen for many, many years. He should be getting on uh, television, and he should be acknowledging to the people that, in fact, he has sinned, that he is sorry for his sin, and that he is going to encourage people to be pure because you know something, purity is the only protection from that disease, which is even acknowledged by the American Medical Association. Very interesting, I look, interestingly, I looked into an encyclopedia that is an American Medical Association encyclopedia. And I looked under AIDS, and it says in that encyclopedia that there is not sufficient evidence to say that the use of certain devices is a protection against this disease. Father Jenkins. I'm afraid that uh, Irvin Magic Johnson is going to be used now. <clears throat> you see, for years, the homosexual community, as it's called, the gay community, has been trying to, uh, to get across the idea that homosexuality is not the problem, that it is a heterosexual problem as much as a homosexual problem. And uh, the newspapers very often press the point that it's spreading in the, homose the heterosexual community. Uh, so the idea I've been told is because as long as this is perceived as principally a homosexual problem, the government funding will not be there and there'll be also a certain uh, prejudice against homosexuals, what they call homophobia. But if it can be perceived that AIDS is a heterosexual problem, there will be a greater willingness to fund it, and also it will look like a very generic disease. And so when someone lo like Magic Johnson comes, uh, comes before the, uh, the public and says, I have a, I've tested positive for HIV, uh, this has a tremendous impact. At least they're hoping it will have a tremendous impact on all the people who, who will look upon this as some great scourge of this century, having nothing to do with purity. It's a matter of technology. It's a matter of whether we can find a cure for it. It's a matter of whether we can uh, use uh, various prophylactic devices that will prevent us from getting it while we're committing sin. Uh, the word sin doesn't even come, come to mind with them. Uh, their whole purpose is to be able to fornicate, uh, commit adultery, and sodomize each other without ha suffering any ill effects, which they, can, they consider themselves martyrs. If, if anything bad happens to them because of all of these crimes that they commit against the natural law. I fear that uh, Johnson is going to become a spokesman for this crowd, probably without realizing it. They're going to use him to make this disease not only um, not you know, anything to be ashamed of, some but a kind of martyrdom. So, yes, some sort of uh, you become a hero for, right. for having done something and, and contracted this horrible disease. Um, you know, this, this all happens at a time when, when we're supposedly worried about all of the unwed mothers in the world and what's happening to the little children who are born to these unwed mothers. We're concerned about, uh, about uh, 
you know, so many uh, impurity, impurity-related crimes, uh, child abuse, uh, uh, you know, crimes of violent crimes against women and so on. And, and here this happens, and the message is not be pure. The message is not control yourselves. The message is not mea culpa, I've done something wrong. The message is, hey, be careful when you do this, you know, so you don't suffer any, any bad side effects. This is disgusting. This is absolutely, ridiculously disgusting. And somebody should stand up and say this. This guy with his stature should be there telling all the kids, look what happened here. You know? and, I, and this is why it happened, too, because I was fooling around, and I shouldn't have been. What I was doing was immoral, and you should not do this. But is that what he's going to say to these kids? No. He's going to tell them, hey, be careful when you do this so it doesn't happen to you. This is disgusting. Well, you know, all you have to do is look in the Gospels where our Lord said, if anyone should corrupt one of these little ones, it'd be better that he have a millstone cast ar tied around his neck and cast into a sea. And what this whole drive is happening is it is encouraging uh, children and to, to, that to behave immorally and that, in fact, there's nothing immoral about doing this. It's fine. It's just like drinking orange juice, except be careful when you drink it. It, it also puts a seal of approval on perversion. See, that is, you have to remember, in my opinion anyway, that is one of the reasons he is the hero of the magnitude uh, that they have turned him into, because of the nature of this disease. This disease in the United States is primarily transmitted through perversion. You understand? If he got up, for example, and announced that he had a different kind of venereal disease, and that's what this is, it's a venereal disease. Let us say, for example, it were a venereal disease that was not associated with perversion. He may have been applauded. He may have been turned into uh, something of a hero, but I don't believe he would have been turned into the major hero that he has been turned into now because of the power and the influence of what one senator called the sodomy lobby. They have so much power. Uh, these uh, people who are doing things that are an abomination before God. They have so much pe power, so much influence in politics, in the media, that they just went into a kind of frenzy. They interrupted ordinary broadcasting to present this, uh, uh, this press conference with a man who is declaring before the whole world that he has this deadly disease. It's just, it's horrible. You know, it, it is sad, too, because, because no one likes to see anyone be struck with this disease. I mean, no one relishes this. This, this is horrible thing to happen. I happen to believe that it is a scourge from God. It's a judgment of God to try to make the human race think, to stop and think for a minute, take stock and see where, which way it's going. But still, no one wants even the worst sinner to suffer this terrible, the consequences of his sin, unless it will do him some good, unless it might eventually help him save his soul, die in the state of grace, and, uh, and go to heaven. That's ultimately what matters anyway. But when you see people not learning anything from this, uh, especially a man who is so regarded so highly and could do so much good, that, that just makes it all the, all the sadder. Uh, you know, he was on television the other night, uh, Magic Johnson was on television saying that he, he expected that God now was going to give him uh, the strength to promote the message of safe, uh, safe sodomy and fornication and adultery. That this is going to be God's way. God preserved him somehow. And that God was going to bless him now for this. Well, God would bless him if his message was, hey, follow the moral law. Follow the sixth commandment. Follow the ninth commandment. God certainly would bless him for that. But this isn't going to be a blessing. This is going to be a curse on the country if he's going to be promoting this message of you know, we're running out of time, and one last question I'd like, or just thought I'd like to share with you, 
it seems to me that Magic Johnson is becoming a tool and a representative of the human race. Perhaps this is reading too much into it, perhaps not, rebelling against God. And he's a martyr rebelling against a tyrant who's trying to bind people by certain laws and restrict their pleasures. And as such, he's honored as such. Uh, he seems that as a result of, of this thing, he's uh, achieved a larger than life status because he's dying for the cause. What do you think of that? Does it seem that there's almost this, this, an, this is an effort to elevate him as like man's way of shaking his fist at God? I don't know if the people behind it think of it in those terms, but I think in the practical order that is what it is. You have this huge seg segment of the population uh, living in such a way which is an abomination before God. They have tremendous power, tremendous political influence, and they want to be sanctioned they want to force the rest of us to say that their perverse behavior is acceptable. And I think this glorification of Magic Johnson implicitly carries that message. You've been watching what Catholics believe.